Hi everyone, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs, and this is my second installment of my series on pouring acrylic paints. And today we're going to do something I call a spin pour. And what we're basically going to do is take one of these, remember these, vinyl, records, 33 RPMs, and change it into this. Now you've seen in my vlog uh, another one of these that I turned into a clock. But in this video, I'm going to show you how I mix up the paint for this and the little gadget I use to spread the paint around in a circular fashion. But before I do that, I just want to pick up a little from where I left off on video number one, and that's the finished canvases that I did uh, in that one, where this was the dirty cup pour, or the dirty pour, as I called it and it's now been all var varnished and it did change slightly and they will when they dry but it didn't change that much um, I think actually I like it better this way and uh, I always have a problem with that trying to figure out which way I should uh, present these uh, when I get them finished so I have that completed um, it's not done yet I'm keeping it in my stack of canvases that I've done because I want to add some mixed media elements to this um, and here was the one that I did with the same paint, the leftover paint, a little smaller canvas, a 6x6, six six, where I pulled the paint through the various layers using a popsicle stick. And it's now varnished as well, and it too will make a very interesting background piece. Hmm, I wonder, what if I mounted the two of them together? Whoa, there's a potential. Anyways, and the other thing I want to show you were the skins and uh, these are the skins that <clears throat> excuse me frog in my throat these are the skins that came uh, from the drippage Oops, that one kind of got curled under this is the one thing about acrylic skins too they, they remain a little bit sticky on one side so you've got to put them on something like a piece of deli paper or a piece of wax paper that when you're storing them but these came out very nice too and I don't know what I'll do with them yet, but um, it's good to have them because you can twist them and roll them up and stick them on things for a 3D element on, a, again, another mixed media piece. So that worked out pretty good. Now in that video, I was also mentioning that I was having a hard time finding freezer paper. Well, guess what? No longer have the problem. I have a big roll of freezer paper right here. Try to keep the glare off it and um, I, it took some doing. I phoned uh, several different places in my area and I found one place that had one roll of it. But now I have it. I made sure it's the right stuff and you can see, pull the roll out for you, that this one side has, and you can see the shine on it, has sort of a plastic coating and then the other side is just plain. And that's what you put acrylic skins on. So I've lined my trays for today uh, with this paper and I should be able to get some really decent um, acrylic skins using that. In fact, after I got this roll, I put the, this product by Reynolds, I put it into Amazon.ca and found a supplier where I can get for 60 bucks, uh, which also include, but it has free shipping, uh, six rolls of this. So they're 50 feet a piece. So counting this one, that'll give me what, 350 feet of freezer paper? I think I'll have enough freezer paper for a long, long time. So anyways, my hunt for freezer paper is over. I've got it. Great. Okay. In the um, last video as well, I had shown you, I thought I had shown you, the different products that I use for a pour. Then I realized after I put the whole video together that that segment for some for some reason got edited out. So I'm just going to briefly go over what you need for any pour. Of course you basically need some paint. Now it doesn't matter what kind of acrylic paint you use. Uh, it's all experimentation. The easiest thing to use is a liquid acrylic. But you can use tube paste as well. It's just going to take a little bit more uh, elbow grease to mix up the paint with the other uh, things you're putting in it. These are not expensive paints, they're bulk acrylic paints and I bought them at 
uh, a place that supplies uh, large quantities of art materials, uh, mainly for schools. And uh, they were like $6.70 a bottle. And they're fairly large bottles. I'm not sure how big these are. 500 milliliters, maybe. Maybe a little bigger than that. Um, but I did, I showed you in my vlog uh, last week, uh, a pour I did, did with these. And they created really great cells in that pour. So, you know, finding, getting those elusive cells seems to be a real uh, trick. And so I'm going to use these paints again today. You've also got to add, though, to these paints some pouring medium. Now, people are using all kinds of different things for pouring medium. Uh, what a pouring medium is, is basically a fluid medium that just makes your paint a little bit runnier, but it doesn't break down the adhesive quality of it. If you just use water alone, and if you use too much water, your paint won't dry. It'll just run right off the canvas. So this avoids that problem. Now, people are using matte medium, uh, liquid matte medium, or fluid matte medium for this. And some people are using actually ordinary everyday white glue, like Elmer's white school glue, and that kind of thing. I haven't tried either one of those two things in my mixtures, but uh, I'm going to make a video as part of this series where I'm going to do some experimentation with additives to the paint and see what happens with them all. A little bit of the mad chemist kind of idea. So pouring medium. And then I put in some silicone. Now silicone, the videos that I see, people call the silicone different things. Um, you know, silicone oil and some of them have silicone sprays. What I have right here, and this was recommended by Anne-Marie Anne uh, Ritterhoff. Um, I did a review of her website. She does a lot of acrylic pouring, and if you've never seen her website, or not her website, her YouTube channel, do check her out. That's Anne-Marie Ritterhoff. Um, she uses the silicone that is used for lubricating a treadmill. It's actually called treadmill lubricant or treadmill silicone. You can find it on Amazon. I bought three bottles this size. They came in a package of three for about $15. Um, and it's kind of thick and I, I do add it to the uh, mixture. Again, it's kind of hit and miss whether I'm going to get cells with it, but I'm going to use this today and, and try it. The other kind is a spray that you can buy in the automotive section of Canadian Tire or you can probably buy it in any automotive uh, parts place and it's just a silicon lubricant and it comes in a spray bottle and I find the best thing to do with it is get a little plastic bottle like this spray some of it into that bottle um, let some of the repellents in it um, disperse and then you've got silicone oil and so you can use that as well the other thing that you need is of course you need some water and I have water right here um, for adding into the paint mixture as well to get it to the consistency that you want for pouring. You're going to need some plastic disposable cups. I use plastic disposable cups because when I'm done I can throw them out. No fuss, no muss, no wash up. You're also going to need some stir sticks, just popsicle sticks. Uh, these are sort of like tongue depressors, whatever, it doesn't matter. Again, you can throw those out when you're done with them. I highly recommend gloves. These are just disposable gloves, and the reason I recommend them is, well, you saw in that first video, you're going to get a lot of paint on your hands, and this will just save you trying to scrub that acrylic paint and everything off your hands later. Um, and this is sort of optional. Um, I see a lot of people use these. This is one of those kitchen torches, uh, the type you use with, for when you make creme brulee or something like that, and uh, you basically blow this over the top of your... Um, pour and it helps to bring some of the cells out. At least that's what it's supposed to do. Now you can also use a heat gun or a heat tool, the kind of thing you uh, use when you're using embossing powders and you're melting them down. Um, that can that will work too. I've seen people use it. But I'm a little fire bug and this is kind of fun. Okay, so I think that's all for the basic equipment that you may need for doing any pour. Um, again, you're going to want to protect your work area because there's going to be drippage and you saw my setup the way I do it with uh, cafeteria trays and freezer paper lying the bottom of that. So 
I've given you an overview of the materials. Uh, the last thing I want to show you, and if you'll just give me a second, I just I need some space here. So I want to show you my little spin gadget. And uh, this idea is not original to me. I saw it on YouTube. In fact, Anne Marie uh, Ritterhoff, she has something that's just like this as well. So what this is is and it's hard to show it in this camera thing, but this is just a big tub I bought at the dollar store for I think they were four bucks. Nothing's a dollar at the dollar store anymore. Inside is the base of a turntable um, that you could. It's really meant that you would mount something on top of it and make it into a lazy Susan. Now this I bought at a place called Lee Valley. Lee Valley is sort of a catalog store that has a lot of garden stuff, uh, housewares, that kind of thing. And we have one that's not too far away from us. So I went in, but you can look them up online. And you probably can find something like this on Amazon as well. I think it cost me, I think it was 20 bucks. I'm not sure. But that's all it is. I stuck it down into the center of this tub. And basically I stuck it down with... Uh, double-sided tape. That's all that was on it. And then on top of this, I put some strips of double-sided tape as well. And that's just to anchor my uh, record or whatever I'm going to put in here. I'm going to put a record in today. And uh, it just keeps it, um, you know, nailed down as the paint goes on it. Now I am feeling these and they are feeling a little dry. So we'll see how that works out. Um, I may have to put a couple of other strips down, but that's okay. These pull right up and there's nothing to that. Um, you'll see some glue around in here. Well, that was from the spin I did on those records I showed you earlier. And the beauty of this being plastic and using acrylic paint is when that's dry, this all peels right off. There was stuff all over the inside of here, and you'll see what I mean um, once I do the pour. And uh, I just let it sit for a couple of days, and I just pulled it up with one strip. And guess what? You've sort of got acrylic skins again. I'm all about acrylic skins it seems. Okay so that's the special little piece of equipment that uh, you'll need for uh, a spin pour. Now the third thing I've seen other people make contraptions where they don't have something as tall as this and they just put cardboard around. Yeah that works. Um, it just depends how messy you want to get. This contains the mess. That's why I, I like using it. Okay, so let's get on with mixing up our paints. So I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to mix up my first paint and uh, show you how that works. And then I'll pause the video and uh, mix the other ones off camera because who wants to watch this process? And then we'll do the spin. So I'll be right back once I get my equipment out. Okay, I'm back, and you can see I'm all gloved up here, my lovely blue gloves. And uh, I've got a cup, and I have my paints here. Now, I'm going to use it colors. I never know. I just grab whatever's grabbing me at the time. So I'm going to use red, blue, and purple, and some white. Now, why am I using the white? You'll use a lot of white in a pour because basically it almost serves as a base, especially if you're doing a dirty pour. Um, you don't have to use white. I just find that using white helps to lighten up um, the background. Now on those black ones that I did, all I used was I used black and white and pewter in those. So they came out a little on the dark side, but that was what I wanted. So by using white, it lightens things up a little bit. So I'm going to mix up my paints. Here. I'm going to show you with this one what I'll do first. So I just pour in oh I'm giving this a good amount of paint about an eighth of a cup I guess. It, it depends on how much surface you're going to be covering. Um, I At least I always think you should have a little bit more than, than less. Um, it's a pain if you have to mix up more paint. Uh, and since you're doing this as a dirty pour, um, you want to spread right out across uh, so you have so there's very little touching up that you have to do. So I've got some paint in here. Now, next thing I'm going to put in some pouring kneading. Now, I really can't give you 
exact measurements as to how much of this I should put in here. Um, you don't want to overdo it, and I think on the side of the bottle, they might suggest that you don't put in, I'm just looking, no, it doesn't say, but you shouldn't put in any more than about 30% of what you've got in here to this. So, that's enough, I think. I just gave it a couple of squirts. And then I'm going to add a little water. Now, you don't add too much water to start with. You just add a few drops to get started. And then we're going to stir this around. And the consistency that you want is you want this rel fairly runny. But as I said in the first video, someone mentioned that it should be sort of like the consistency of pancake batter. And I think that is a good analogy. Anology. I think that's the word, yeah. So, just giving this a good stir around. You want to make sure you thoroughly mix everything together. And let's see. Actually, I think that's pretty good. Now, the next thing I would do is I would add my silicone to this, but I'm going to wait until I get the other paints all mixed and then add the silicone at sort of at the last minute because I don't know if this stuff evaporates or not. It probably doesn't really evaporate, but um, I just find that if it sits around for too long, you have less chance of getting cells. So I'm not going to put this in until I have all the other paints mixed up. So I'm gonna go off camera, mix up my other three colors, and then I'll be back. Okay, so I have my four colors all mixed up, so all I need to do now is just add the silicone. So I'm just giving them a little bit of a, another light stir before I do that. And how much of this I put in? I don't know. But I put a fair amount in, so it stuff comes out fairly thick. So I'm putting in a couple of squeezes, and I'm sorry, I realize I'm off camera again. This is a very awkward position for doing this, because this, as I've said in my first video, this is not my usual way. You give it a light, light stir. You don't want to uh, over mix the silicone in here. So I'm just sort of like folding it in. And now I'm going to take a clean cup, and I'm going to put this in uh, for a dirty pour. So... Um, whatever goes in first comes out last. So I'll put in some white. And I think I'll do, I think I'll go with the purple next. Put that in shot for you. And let's do the red. blue. Now you don't have to have these in equal amounts. It's really up to you and it's all experimentation because you really can't control, control how this is going to look. Now I've got my tub here and you see I've put my record on. Sorry about the noise but this is going to be noisy and I've also um, I cleaned the record off with a little bit of alcohol as well, just to get some, if there was any greasy spots and that kind of thing, just to make sure that the paint sticks well. Um, you could cover the label with some gesso. I didn't do that on my last two, um, and it worked out fine, but you could if you thought it was going to poke up through your paint, maybe if you were using more transparent paint as well. So I'm going to get this thing spinning, sorry about the noise, and I'm going to pour my paint and watch the magic. Now, my paint didn't flow all that well, so let me get in here. And look at the pattern.
pattern on that. And I think I might be getting some cells. Now, I want a little bit more paint into that center, so I'm just going to scrape out what I have left in the cup. And I'm going to give this one more spin. Yeah, look at that. That's magnificent. Now, before I try to pull this up and out of here, I'm just going to give my fingers a little bit of a wipe off. I'm just wondering if I should give it one more spin. No, nope, I think I'll leave it. I'm, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Um, but I am going to torch it and see if I get any more cells. I got a few, but not many. I've got some cells happening in and around here, but they're subtle. Now, I need to pull this out to let it dry. Um, you could leave it sitting in the tub to dry, I suppose. In fact, yeah, I think that's what I'll do. I don't need to try and pull this out while it's still wet. I can leave it right in here. So you can see. Now I will show you what this looks like once it's dry, um, probably in video number three, and I do varnish this as well. But I've still got some paint left over here, so let's have some fun on our freezer paper. Fun with freezer paper. So, I've got my tray, I've got my freezer paper. So, I am just going to pour my leftovers all over this. Of course, I could have done a dirty pour, too. Probably had enough to do that, but I don't care. I'm not going to do that. This is just going to be a skin, so it really doesn't matter how this turns out. I don't know. I, I'm seeing little images of circuses in my head when I pour these colors, like clowns and stuff. I don't know why it makes me think of that, but for some reason it does. Maybe it's the fumes. You know, actually there aren't any fumes with this that I'm noticing. Okay, let's have some fun. I'm not really mixing the paints, I'm just pulling the paints through each other. Um, because if I start mixing these paints, I'll probably get mud. And I don't want mud. Now you, you don't want your paint to be too thick, because it'll take forever to dry, but you also don't want it to be too thin. 
as well because then when you try to pull it up it's just going to rip up in pieces Okay, I'm done. So, this I'm going to set aside in a spot where it won't be disturbed, and it's going to probably take it a couple of days to dry before I can pull it off the freezer paper. So, I'll show you what that looks like in video number three. So, that's what I call a spin pour. You saw the equipment that you need for it, it's a lot of fun. You don't have to do it on a record, you could get a round canvas. Uh, or you could get, um, I'm I thought I'd give it a try on some old CDs as well, so there'd be little smaller ones. Um, I even thought of taking a smaller canvas, one that'll fit inside that um, barrel, and uh, mounting that and spinning it. So it'd be a rectangle or a square, but the paint will go out all over it. So you're not limited to putting, doing this just on a record. Use your imagination. You can do it on all kinds of different things uh, with that, and it's kind of fun. As I said, it's a minimal, minimal amount of cost in s creating this little uh, uh, spin tub, if you want to call it that. That's what I'm going to call it. Um, so it's very affordable. And again, this is not expensive paint. There's no need to use expensive paint. You can if you want. Now, as I said in the first video too, paints all seem, depending on the brand, seem to have different um, vicosities. Vicosity? Is that the word? Thickness. Um, so you'll get varying results. Um, but anyways, it's fun to do. And so in part three, I think that I'm going to experiment with um, adding different things to the paint to see if we can get those also elusive cells. So until then, have a great day. Bye-bye for now.